Hello, ATC family. Hello, all of our friends who are watching around the world. We're so grateful that you take the time to watch our pastoral devotions. We pray that it's a blessing to you today. Today, I want to read a passage of scripture from Matthew chapter 6. And uh, Jesus is speaking. This is the Sermon on the Mount. And he covers a topic that I think is sort of top of mind in our world today. Uh, he's talking about worry. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Well, here's a word for all of us today. I think every one of us in our respective situations right now have something that we're feeling a little bit anxious about. Um, well, there are some people who have lost jobs. Maybe you're one of those people. Maybe you're a person who's just concerned about health and don't know when you're gonna walk into one of those dreaded, you know, uh, microbes out there that are just floating around waiting for us. And we want our family to be healthy and we want our adult, our parents to, to be healthy as well. And, and we're just concerned about that. We're concerned about the economy. What's the impact gonna be on our, on our nation? And what kind of world are we facing? So there's a lot for us to worry about. Now, having said that, when somebody tells us, hey, don't worry, I can be honest with you and tell you that sometimes it feels a little bit patronizing. Uh, it doesn't feel good when I'm telling people what I'm worried about and they're like, don't worry about it. Eh, that's not always encouragement. But we need to realize who's telling us from in this passage of scripture not to worry. It's Jesus. Jesus, God manifested in flesh. Jesus was telling us, don't worry. And think about his life. Think about what was on the horizon, what was waiting for him. Jesus, the possessor of all wisdom, is looking at your life and he sees the full race. He sees every hurdle and every barrier and every drama and trauma that you're going to encounter. And he's telling you with this high definition view of your life, look, don't worry. And when you look at what Jesus says to not worry about, we realize that there are people who may be in more desperate situations than even we are in. He's saying, don't worry about the food. Don't worry about the clothing uh, that, that you're going to put on your back. He's talking about extreme duress. He's talking about extreme poverty. He's talking about people who may have cupboards that are bare right now. At least in the Fox Valley, I can tell you that there's food available for us. Uh, right now we have the food. Right now we have shelter. We have clothing. We have practical things. And Jesus is speaking to people who are even in more distress than we are. And he's saying, don't worry about it. And so that encourages me when I know who's saying that to me. What does worry even mean? If you go to the original language and the scriptures, that word worry means to have a divided mind. It means that your brain is not functioning as a whole. Do you know that when we give ourselves over to fear, when we give ourselves over to worry, it's a poor use of our imagination. Sometimes we're imagining the worst and we're not factoring God into the equation as we should. When we're worried, 
Our brain is divided. It's not functioning as a whole. And we just need to remember Jesus' command to us. Don't worry. Now, I believe in obeying the Bible, don't you? If the Bible tells me that I should repent of my sins, I'm gonna repent of my sins. If Jesus tells me that I need to receive his spirit, then I'm going to do that. And the same, Bible, the same Bible that tells me to repent of my sins and be baptized and be filled with the spirit commands me not to worry. God would not be just if he commanded us to do something but didn't give us the grace or strength to do that. Living a worry-free life is possible even in these extreme scenarios. And it's possible when we realize who it is, who governs it all, who is holding our very lives and homes in the palm of his hand. So let's remember Jesus' words, don't worry, it's not gonna help you. Don't try to live with your mind not functioning as a whole. Think deeply about God. Think deeply about his capability to hold you and to keep you and draw strength from that today. I believe it's possible. In fact, the next time that we get together with our devotion, I wanna carry this theme of worry further because I think there's more here for us. But just for now, let's just remember that to not worry is a command from God. And if it's a command, there's also grace to execute that command, to live it out in our everyday life. I'm praying for you. I, I'm concerned about your life, but I'm also confident in the God that we serve. God bless you.